Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to push the point just a little bit further. All right, listen. Genesis chapter 6, verse 22, and then we'll slide into Genesis chapter 7, a few verses. Now, quick synopsis. Here we go. God is ready to destroy the earth for all the sins of mankind. He is done. Now, Noah is righteous before God. And listen, God told Noah to build an ark. And he gave him all the instructions about the animal, the wildlife, the how many and the kind of food to gather in and how to build the thing in the first place, everything. Listen to this. Verse 22. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Can God say that about us? Okay, moving right along. Listen to this. Verse 1 of chapter 7. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come, thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. And he goes on and on and on and gives him all this information. Well, let me just read it. Verse 3. Of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Verse 4. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his son's wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Now, it came to pass, verse 10, I'm skipping for the sake of time. To, it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. Now, listen to this, you guys. God delivered one group of people because of their obedience and righteousness. When you look at the whole totality of human of mankind all over the face of the earth one family one not five or six families and his neighbors and all mm -mm. why because they wouldn't listen they were willingly ignorant oh, come on it ain't going to be all that. You're so full of drama. You, so, you got to be all this super spiritual crap. God, you really believe all that myth. Ain't nothing but a fairy. It, it's a myth. It's a legend. Come on. Don't take stuff so seriously. But here's the trip. I want, I want to scroll down because I want to read what it says. Um, this is the way. I, I love the way it says this. Okay, can't find it. Don't want to waste time. But it says at one point that God closed the door of the ark. Now, once he shuts the door, they can't get out. And the other folks can't get in. Here's the sad part. Now, I'm going to share this with you. This is an example of what I'm talking about. That may be too spiritual, too biblical 
for you to fathom. Okay, look at me. Look at me. Imagine me being a kid. And this is a true story. My niece and I were in the house. I was approximately nine years old. My parents specifically, see my parents say something, they mean it, they ain't playing. And they follow through. They don't get, sell wolf tickets. My parents specifically told me, whatever you do, do not open the door for anyone and do not leave this house. We will not be gone long. Stay in until we get home and then you can go out. But you stay in this house. Well, dum diddy dum dum wanted to play. There's no harm in playing, is there? Playing isn't a sin. My sin was in the disobedience, not in the playing. As soon as they got out of sight, I left my niece inside because she didn't want to come out anyway. And I tipped my little happy hips down those steps. Two flights of stairs, two long flights of stairs, you know, like 20 steps a piece. Yeah. I'm saying that for a point. You remember them steps. And I tip. Okay. I'm at my neighbor's house. We gonna get down and have fun. So I get so caught up in playing distraction I totally lost track of time and forgot that I wasn't even supposed to be out there in the first place. Terror hits. Can you hear the music? And here I am. Oh, let me get this. Uh, Pat. 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 What? Your father wants you. He's standing outside of your house. I'm dead. Oh, I'm not even supposed to be out here. I forgot. I was just playing. I wasn't doing any harm. I wasn't committing a sin by playing. But I was where I was not supposed to be. I did not do all that my father told me to do, like Noah did all that God told him to do. No, I put my slant on that. So here I am sheepishly with my tail tucked between my legs, tears streaming down my face. You know how kids do hoping that they can, you know, manipulate their way out of a booty whooping. Remember those two flights of stairs? My father whooped my behind every lick for every step all the way up both flights of stairs. I told you not to. And yeah, well, here's the trip. That lasted maybe seven or eight minutes. The pain, the aftermath, the tears. But guess what? It didn't last throughout eternity. Now, what happens if God comes and finds you doing what he told you not to do. When Jesus busts through the clouds, hello, and all the angels and the saints are with him and coming to call up his people in the rapture, what will you be caught doing? Doing what God wants you to do? Being about your father's business, doing your best to live a holy life? Or will you be off to the side, slithering, having some fun? When you know the fun that you're having, he said not to have. So here's the difference. I only had to go up 20, excuse me, two flights of stairs worth of booty whooping. The booty whooping that God is going to bring on behinds when Jesus comes and splits the clouds will be an everlasting, forever, never ending, literal pain in the butt. 
That is one pain you will never get relief from. My little honey stopped hurting after about 20, 30 minutes. But yours won't. If you are found doing what God told you not to do. That's your warning. Be found following God. Be found being caught up in the things of God in holiness, and righteousness, be found pleasing him. Please. The Bible says righteousness is better than sacrifice. So you can use yourself up for the Lord. I'm doing this for God. I'm doing that for God. I'm giving. I'm wearing myself out doing all these church things. But if you're slipping, sliding, peeping, and hiding, and you're doing everything you know God told you not to do, all that sacrifice won't add up to a hill of beans when payday comes. Yeah. Think about it. 